Hi, I'm Andre and I'm a black nerd. And what is going on with Power Rangers? Is the entire franchise getting rebooted? Not just the movie, the whole thing? Let's break it down. Thanks so much for checking out my channel. If you're interested in geeky pop culture, both nostalgic and new, make sure you click that subscribe button so you can check out all the videos I put out in the future. But today, I have got to talk about Power Rangers. So I actually get press releases from time to time from Hasbro, and this was also on Hasbro's corporate press website. Jonathan Entwistle, who we've talked about before, I made a video a while back talking about how he was in talks to be the director of the new rebooted Power Rangers movie. But in this announcement, it's saying that he's not just heading up the new movie, he is heading up the movie and TV series. So on the press release on the website, it just says, Jonathan Entwistle, I hope we're saying your name right, by the way. <laughs> Jonathan Entwistle signs on to Hasbro's Power Rangers for E1. Just again, a recap, Hasbro bought Power Rangers, Hasbro bought E1, the entertainment company, in addition to what they already had before with their Hasbro line of movies like Transformers and G.I. Joe and even My Little Pony. Now, all things E1 Entertainment with Hasbro, so you can kind of connect the dots of what's going on here. But in the email that I got, the headline for that one read, Jonathan Entwistle signs on to reimagine new film and television universe based on Hasbro's Power Rangers for Entertainment One. Saying film and television universe, are you saying film universe and television universe? Or are you saying film and television universe as we are all one? E1, I am Saban, has become I am Hasbro. Entertainment One, Hasbro's entertainment studio announced today that producer and director Jonathan Entwistle has come on board to shepherd new film and television adaptations of Power Rangers. E1 will develop and produce the projects with Entwistle set to direct across both formats. Now, this could mean a number of things. On one hand, it could just mean we're getting the Power Rangers television series like we always get. We get the Power Rangers movies, whatever that's going to be, and he's just going to be the one in charge looking over all of it. You know, we've had people like that in the past, Brian Cassatini. We've even had Saban himself do that. But another way to look at this is that he could be coming on board looking at both formats to kind of make sure that they want to make everything kind of connected because we are seeing that happen in general with television and movies. Great example, of course, is Marvel. Marvel's got the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and they've had some television shows that were kind of connected. Now we're getting these Disney Plus series like WandaVision, Falcon and Winter Soldier, Loki, and those shows are going to be directly tied in to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. We've even seen a little bit of with DC, they had Crisis on Infinite Earths, and that was mostly focused on their TV shows, but there was that infamous scene where the Flash from the movie DC Universe met up with the Flash from the TV Universe. So they're already showing that there's a multiverse there where they're technically connected. So we could see a similar thing happening now with Power Rangers, with someone on board to look at both the film and TV properties. We could be looking at a future where now it's not just Power Rangers the movie universe and Power Rangers the TV universe, but a Power Rangers universe where everything's connected, whether it's the storylines are going on at the same time or the multiverse thing. This might be a restart so that the movies and the TV shows where they go from this point forward could now all take place in the same universe. So maybe if you're watching something from the Power Rangers TV show, then the movie is connected, or it could just mean that they want to have some Power Rangers stuff going on for the movies and for the TV shows that even if they aren't in the same universe, they at least have a similar feel. So, you know, it's all things Power Rangers outside of just the name, who knows? But there's some other stuff in this article that I'm like, oh, we gotta talk about this. Jonathan has an incredible creative vision for this iconic and hugely successful franchise and is hands down the right architect to join us as we reimagine the television and film worlds of this property. I can't help but notice the word reimagine keeps popping up. Now this can mean everything from hey, we're gonna keep doing Power Rangers the way it's been going, but just try some new things, put some new ideas to it. But reimagine, let's just be honest, could also mean clean slate. It could mean that everything up to Power Rangers at this point is some kind of legacy. And then anything after that is going to be the new Power Rangers, which could be a complete restart. Look, look, we don't know. Let's not, let's not assume, but I just keep noticing the word reimagine comes up a lot. And a lot of times when an entertainment property uses the word reimagine, that usually means doing something a different way. Like if you think about Ninja Turtles, every time they come out with a new series, it's a reimagine. <laughs> every time they reboot a franchise, it's a reimagine. So 
Are we getting some reimagination here? I don't know. All right, now here's where it's gonna start getting a little interesting. This was all a quote from Jonathan Itwistle, who's heading up all of this. This is an unbelievable opportunity to deliver new Power Rangers, new Power Rangers to both new and existing generations of awaiting and adoring fans. All right, now they just said new Power Rangers. Now we always get new Power Rangers. Like we getting Power Rangers Dino Fury next. So we always get new Power Rangers, but that that new could be, that's a, that's a lowercase new right now. But you know, depending on what happens in the future, that could be an uppercase new. You know what I'm saying? We'll bring the spirit of analog into the future, harnessing the action and storytelling that made this brand a success. Okay, see? Now that, that sounded like some new stuff there. I could be reading too much in that, but what it sounds like to me, what they're saying is, no matter what we do with the Power Rangers in the future, we're gonna always remember what made them successful. We're gonna always remember what made them popular. But we could possibly be looking at some, some variations, some differences with Power Rangers in the future than maybe what we've seen before. I mean, Power Rangers, I love it. It's a franchise that's been going on for literally almost 30 years now, but it has definitely rode one specific train all this time. There might be some new stations now. <laughs> we might get some new train stops. We might get some new paths to take with this franchise. We've seen it a little bit with the comic books. We've seen it with other different things, but they could be saying right here that we could even be seeing that more with movies and television. He co-created the Netflix original series, I'm Not Okay With This, and created the Netflix original series, The End of the Effing World. So you can obviously tell that he does some things that are not always necessarily family friendly, uh, which is interesting to bring someone like that into something like Power Rangers, not the same level, but it's in the same vein of when we first heard that Michael Bay was going to be directing the Transformers movies and even producing the Ninja Turtles movies, or even recently with Seth Rogen working on the new Ninja Turtles movie, people that you wouldn't expect to be with these franchises. And that's the same thing with this. This is someone who's made like some indie Netflix teen, but you know, teen to adult type of content now working with something that obviously has mostly geared towards kids, even though it has a franchise of fans, of course, who are adults who like this. And that's why I think this is very important. Speaking of him not just doing family friendly stuff, this is the part where I'm like, oh shoot, this could mean more than what it sounds like. It sounds like a normal sentence, but it could mean more. In addition to the new non-kid projects under Entwistle, so they're talking about his other things that he's doing that are non-kid projects, Power Rangers inspired kid series, Beast Morphers is currently airing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's get into this. All right, so people used to make fun of me about this. Like I have called this show this before. People are like, Andre, you shouldn't call Power Rangers a kid series, even though it airs on Nickelodeon at eight o'clock in the morning. I'm not saying an adult can't watch it. There's a lot of shows that I watch that are outside my demographic that I love and enjoy. This article just basically called Beast Morphers a kid show. It says a Power Rangers inspired kid series. Now, why did they make that? An emphasis. They made that very clear. A Power Rangers inspired kid series. So could this mean with Jonathan Entwistle taking the helm and them specifically referencing in this article that he works on non-kid projects, is this them giving out a little hint that they could also be looking at Power Rangers inspired non-kid series? This gives me the vibe that they might be looking at what are some other ways to do Power Rangers that's not just the show that airs on Saturday morning. And that's not a surprise considering these things, <laughs> these lightning collection figures, they are very aware that there is a long legacy with Power Rangers and they are very aware that there is a long legacy of Power Ranger fans who are teens and adults. And so they're probably looking at this franchise and going, look, if we know, if we are aware that there are Power Rangers fans of all ages out there, why are we just making one thing for one demographic when we could be using this franchise across multiple demographics in different ways. So for the older Power Ranger fan, this could actually be a good thing. When you look at things like the Power Rangers comic books, when you look at Shattered Grid, when you look at them constantly putting out Lord Draken and Ranger Slayer figures and even making the graphic novels that they're making that are focusing more on Psycho Rangers and Time Force, it gives me the vibe at least, at least the hope. I'm not saying it's going to happen, I'm just saying it gives me the hope that they're looking at we can do more with this franchise. We can do other things with it. We don't have to follow this distinct path. And there was, of course, a rumor that was going around. I didn't want to talk about it too much because you know how I am about the rumors. There was a rumor that was going around that Hasbro was maybe not going to work with Toei anymore. Toei, of course, being where they're getting the Sentai footage to then make the Power Rangers show. So 
this could be part of that or what this could mean is that could just be one part like they could still continue to do adapting sentai to a power rangers inspired kid series but they may also be like but we got our own entertainment studio we got the funds we got the technology we got this franchise we can do some other stuff with it that's not necessarily stick sentai footage in it and i'm not just talking about making a movie version i'm talking about like they can make other tv series they could make something that's more mature that's on streaming services they could even make movies for streaming service we know how the theaters are right now so as much as it would be cool to see another power rangers movie that's going to theaters this could mean that they could even be thinking about making power rangers movies that go directly to streaming and if they make a power rangers movie that goes to streaming they might be able to have that hone in on a specific fan base that they can't necessarily do with a big screen movie on a mainstream movie they got to try to appeal to the masses so they're going to do something that's kind of general that's kind of you know feels like the other superhero films they're probably going to play on nostalgia more with the 90s and things like that but a shattered grid you know series or or film or a series or film where you get, you know, Time Force cast back and you do it a few years later or any other group of Power Rangers and go, let's go a few years later and follow up those stories. That's something you could do on streaming because now it's not as big budget, it's not as big profile, it's for a specific audience, but it still fits with the brand. This is TVG, this is TV Y7, this is TV PG or TV 14 even. It's possible to do it and that as what I've been saying all this time is what I want to see with this franchise. I love Power Rangers. I don't know every single thing about Power Rangers like some of y'all do. I know some of y'all are hardcore fans, but I just, I love this franchise so much. I grew up with it. I love that it still continues to this day. There's so much about Power Rangers I enjoy. There are elements of Power Rangers that are similar to elements in DC and Marvel and Ninja Turtles and everything else that's out there. There's a way to bring Power Rangers to feel like it's new again. And I think that that's what this is looking at. I think it's very possible that if other Power Ranger things are out there outside of the one main show, that could show people that it's not just this nostalgic thing from the 90s that still just happens to be around. But like, no, the Power Rangers are back. They're new, they're back, they're speaking to me. You know, they're looking the same as everything else I'm watching right now. How do you hit people who know about Power Rangers, but aren't like hardcore talking about it 24 seven to maybe give this franchise another chance if they saw it was something for them. You know, I, I mentioned this before, a friend of mine who's not a big Power Rangers fan who saw that Shattered Grid short that they had with Jason David Frank called me up and was like, is this a new show? I wanna watch this. So I'm just saying, I'm not saying you gotta go full on rated R Power Rangers. I mean, if that's something they wanna do, but like see how many things they've done with just Transformers. Freaking My Little Pony has movies and animated series. If My Little Pony can have a movie, animated series, comic books, and now crossovers. <laughs> You can't tell me that it's not Power Rangers time to be out there. I mean, yes, they obviously did it their crossover with Ninja Turtles and Justice League. They obviously have their comic book, but I'm just saying if Jonathan Entwistle becomes the Kevin Feige of Power Rangers, that would make me very happy. Not on the same scale, obviously, but I'm just saying if that's the vibe I get from it is now we have this one sort of dome of Power Rangers and there can be multiple things in it for multiple audiences from kids to adults, but it just has this one vibe behind all of it. That'd be really cool. I would really like that. But Power Ranger fans, I'm holding your hands right now. This could mean they might start doing some stuff that might feel a little different. <laughs> you know, I mean, let's just be prepared for that. Like, I'm not saying that it's going to happen. We don't know anything outside of this article. I'm talking and speculating so much off of one article. But what I take from this as a whole is I keep seeing the word reimagine. It might sound scary at first because especially when someone comes with the idea of like, hey, this thing has been going on a certain way for so many years, here's the way to change it. You'd be like, no, and I would be like that too. I'd be like, whoa, whoa, hey, 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 hey. You don't, you, you, you don't just come in here and just start messing up the house. Just gives me the feeling that there could be some new stuff that happens with this franchise than what we're used to. And no matter what we think it's supposed to do, no matter what we assume it's supposed to do, I think this is now the point for everybody out there, Power Ranger hardcore fan or not, to just go, we don't know the future with this franchise. Stuff's gonna happen with it. Maybe a lot of stuff is gonna happen with it. Movies, cartoons, video games, live action TV shows, streaming movies, who knows? Definitely merchandise. <laughs> that's, the one, that's the one guarantee. There will definitely be more toys and action figures and merchandise. 
We know that for sure. But outside of that, from the entertainment side of things, especially after Dino Fury, which they haven't told us anything that's going to happen after Dino Fury. Like from that point forward, who knows? Or Dino Fury could be the start. But who knows? But like I said, I feel like between the Sentai that you can adapt, the Power Rangers that we already had in the past that you could always revisit, and anything new that Hasbro wants to make themselves, I think there's a lot of possibilities for Power Rangers in the future. And I'm hoping that this is kind of the possible start for that. Even if it all doesn't work out great, who knows? Some things might fail, but I will say I'm excited. The only thing that just bums me out is I do wish that some of the people that had worked on it in the past could have been a part of it. We know there's some people that used to be real connected with Power Rangers that ain't around there anymore. I would assume this whole Entertainment One E1 thing probably has a little bit to do with that. But I'm hoping that at the very least, they might have put some droplets before leaving of here's how you can take Power Rangers to a new direction that maybe continues with this, even if it doesn't continue with those people exactly. That's my only hope. And I just hope that, you know, the franchise gets the love it deserves. It should be right at the table. <laughs> <laughs> it should be at the kids' table for Thanksgiving. It should be at the main table with the other with the others out there. You know what I'm saying? I know there's a lot of speculation, a lot of thoughts, but it just it just made me very intrigued to see what this is talking about with Power Rangers. And, and just, again, shows you that, you know, even though I don't talk about the franchise all the time, I do love it. I do have a heart for it. Um, and I'm just glad that I get to have any small part with it, whether as a fan or even, you know, things like hosting the Hasbro PulseCon with the Beast Morphers cast or being on something like Power Rangers Hyperforce. You know, I just I just really like it. I just really like this franchise and I just want to see more with it. And I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that could make it be a different thought for people than what it was before. And if that thought is a better thought, and if that thought brings in more casuals to Power Rangers to make it a bigger franchise, that's okay. And we should be okay with it. Everybody that likes Power Rangers does not need to like all 20 something seasons and know every single thing about it. They just need to know that they like it. And whether that means watching the current series, watching whatever new stuff that Hasbro makes, or just buying a Power Rangers t-shirt at Hot Topic or a Funko Pop, whatever it takes to keep Power Rangers going, I'm all about it. Let me get off my soapbox here. <laughs> <laughs> and then let me climb off my high horse. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching this. Definitely let me know what you think in the comments. What do you think all this means for the future of Power Rangers? And does it excite you? Does it scare you? Put your emotions out there. Um, and, you know, hopefully they'll listen to the fans. Make sure you subscribe. And I love you like a play cousin. I'm Audi 5000. It's Morphin Time. All the time.